Recently, I was thrown out of a venue that was in a public high school. Now, this was a nighttime rental of an auditorium, so there weren't going to be any students around. But nevertheless, the Muslims raised a fuss, and they said, you know, I, Bill Warner, is a one-man hate group, so haters shouldn't be allowed to use the public taxpayer property, and so get him out. And I thought, well, this is an interesting argument, that haters should not be allowed to use public property. And I thought to myself, well, if I'm a hater, could we not examine the doctrine of hate that's in Islam? Now, notice what I said here. I didn't say that Muslims are haters. What I said was, the doctrine of Islam includes a hidden doctrine of hate. And these are objective standards I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be pointing my finger at anybody. I'm going to be talking about words on paper, doctrine. Now, before we can examine this hidden doctrine of hate, we have to examine what Islam is. Real quickly, Islam is the Sunnah Muhammad and the Quran. And the Quran, there are two Qurans. An early Quran, which is religious, written in Mecca, and then a later Quran, which deals with jihad and politics, and is written in the Medina. They're two very different books. Now, by the way, they all come in the same binding, so you can't go out and buy the Quran of Mecca. Then we have not only two Qurans, but we have two Muhammads. The first Muhammad is the preacher of Islam, a religious man who preached the religion of Islam for 13 years in Mecca and got 150 Arabs to become Muslims. He went to Medina, where he became a politician and a jihadist, and when he died, every Arab was a Muslim. So we have two Muhammads, religious leader, and another Muhammad who's a political jihadist leader. Now what this means is, is that there are two Islams, which means that Islam is dualistic. That is, it has a public piety, and then it has a hidden doctrine of hate. Let me give you an example of what I mean here. The public piety is, is that Jews are people of the book, and they're protected and honored that the Quran includes their prophets and they're wonderful people according to Islam. Well, kind of. Because you see in that early Quran written in Mecca, there's very little Jew hatred. But in the Quran written in Medina, 17% of that Quran in Medina is about Jew hatred. Then we come to the Sirah, the biography of Muhammad. About 12% of it is Jew hatred. The Hadith, nearly 9% is Jew hatred. If you take the overall Quran, Sirah, Hadith, the trilogy, and you find out that it's Jew hatred is about 9% of the total text, why is this important? Well, Mein Kampf, truly the gold standard of Jew hatred, is only about 7% Jew hatred. So Islamic doctrine contains more Jew hatred than Mein Kampf. Let me give you an example by reading you a Hadith and a Quran verse. 7, 166. So when they, the Jews, exceeded the limits of what they were prohibited, we said to them, Be you monkeys, despised and rejected. This verse is one of those that's popular for imams in the Middle East when they're hating Israel to call the Jews monkeys, apes, and also pigs in another verse. Then from the Sirah, the apostle of Allah said, Kill any Jew who falls into your power. Hearing this, a Muslim fell upon a Jewish merchant who was a business associate and killed him. So the public piety is that Islam honors Jews, protects Jews, and their people of the book. But the hidden hate is that Muhammad killed, enslaved, tortured, and exiled every Jew who was in Arabia, or subjugated them as demis. So here we have the public piety and the secret doctrine of hate. Now let's turn to the Christians. The public piety is, oh, Muslims honor Jesus whom they call Isa in the Quran. Why, the name Isa appears more times in the Quran than Muhammad. You see, Christians are people of the book and we honor them. Let's take a closer look at that. That's the public piety. But let's look at the hidden doctrine of hate. Surah 9, 29. Make war on those who have received the scriptures, Jews and Christians, but do not believe in Allah or the last day, not Muslims. They will not forbid what Allah and His Messenger have forbidden. They don't follow the Sharia. The Christians and the Jews do not follow the religion of truth, Islam, until they submit and pay the poll tax, the jizya, and they are humiliated. That is part of the hidden doctrine of hate, but it goes further than that. Muhammad's last year of his career as jihadist was spent in killing Christians. Let's be blunt, Muhammad was a Christian killer. His last two battles at Muta and Tabuk were against Christians. He had to leave Arabia to go to Syria to do this. 
So the public piety is, oh, we honor Jesus. And let's talk a little bit about the Jesus of the Quran, because you see, he's not part of the Trinity. He is not divine. He's a prophet of Allah. He did not die. He was not crucified, and he was not resurrected. That's not Jesus according to the Gospels. That's Jesus according to the Quran, and they're two completely different people. So the public piety is we love Christians, but the secret hate is, or the hidden hate, is that we're not telling you the complete truth about Jesus and Muhammad, let's face it, was a killer of Christians. Now let's take the idea of jihad, because what is the public piety? Islam is the religion of peace. But what do we find? That 21% of the Hadith are about jihad, 67% of the Sirah is about jihad, and the Medinan Quran is 24% about jihad. Now there's no jihad in Mecca. That is part of the thing you will hear about when they want to be publicly pious. But jihad has killed over 270 million people over 1400 years. There's been 1400 years of jihad. So the public piety is religion of peace. The hidden hate is that Islam annihilates all other civilizations. Now let's take another public piety. Oh, Islam honors women. It treats them well. Let's take a look at this. It surely doesn't treat Kafir women very well because there is a doctrine of rape contained within Islam. Let me read you some of that. From Bukhari, Receiving female slaves as shares of the spoils of war, we would practice coitus interruptus with them to avoid unwanted pregnancy. These sex slaves would later be sold and they didn't want to be pregnant because they brought a lower price. We asked Muhammad his opinion, and he asked us three times, do you really remove yourself? Notice he didn't say stop raping the women. He then said, no soul that is not preordained to exist will be created. From the Quran, 424, all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possesses. Public piety, Islam honors women. Hidden hate, there's a doctrine of rape within Islam. Here we have the two, public piety and doctrine of hate or hidden hate. Now remember, we, I started out talking about who should use public spaces. I am not going to use this doctrine of hidden hate arguing against Muslims being able to use public spaces. Indeed, I think they should continue to be able to use public spaces with one proviso. If you're going to rent a public tax paid space, I think that half of your presentation time should be devoted to honest questions, public debate from the floor. And I think that people such as me should be invited in. Why do we need a fascist state determining what should be heard by its citizens? That makes no sense. We're bright enough. We are as intelligent as these authorities and so-called public servants who are censoring what goes in and not in our public spaces. I believe in a robust free speech. I believe that we should all be able to use the public spaces, but that half of our presentation time should be devoted to debate. So that's where we are. I don't care that Islam has a doctrine of hidden hate. I just don't want them to be able to use it and not defend that. Thank you.